everybody, welcome to the how to paint the horrified board game with contrast paints video. So earlier this year, I ran a Kickstarter project for some new camera and video equipment. And one of the stretch goals was to do kind of a how to paint video, but more geared towards the absolute beginner. And so uh, having a game like Horrified, it's only got seven miniatures. They're pretty basic and straightforward miniatures. There's not a ton of little details and nooks and crannies to, uh, you know, fiddle with. And something that's accessible and that's gonna be available hopefully for a long time to come, which I expect this game will be. There's a review video, bam, in the cards or in the description of the video. You can go check it out if you don't know anything about the game. Uh, but I'm gonna jump in and show you how I painted these, these figures. And these are done with 100% contrast paints, no other kind of paints. Uh, and let's just jump into it. And again, if you're an absolute beginner, this is really geared more towards uh, you. If you're an experienced painter, just maybe take a quick scrub through and see the different colors and stuff I use in a little bit. There will be a uh, link below in the description for a geek list, kind of step-by-step -step how to uh, sort of mirror the video. So I'm gonna kind of go through that. And so if you're watching, you can kind of listen a little bit and go back and forth to the geek list. And then also, if you after you've watched the video, if you just need like a cheat sheet, so to speak, that geek list will be there. And you can kind of walk through this, you know, I use this paint and then I painted the face and then I use this paint and I painted the boots or whatever. And so it's gonna go all the way down just talk about the setup, which I'll talk about in the video as well. Like, you know, a lot of beginner stuff you know, what do I need to get started painting? What brushes to use and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna go over all that. Uh, so let's jump right into it. Okay, so before we get started talking about the materials and everything that I used, again, there's a geek list up there. Um, it's got a list of all this, so you don't have to write this down or memorize any of this, but I'm gonna kind of narrate and walk through everything. And just for those that don't own the game, I'm gonna put up some pictures of what the miniatures look like before they were painted. And then of course the final, uh, what they look like when we were all said and done there. Okay, so here you can see all of the paint and everything that I needed to use. So the first thing I did use was this gray sear primer. Now again, we're using 100% contrast paints here. Uh, no layers or shades or highlighting or anything else, just contrast. Uh, but I did decide to go with the gray sear. This one is one of two sort of contrast uh, undercoats that are out there. There's a wraith bone, which is always sold out everywhere. So I went ahead and grabbed this one and I'm actually glad that I did because I think it actually benefited more from being the gray sear than the wraith bone. Now that being said, you could you could use another gray primer. You could use, um, you know, a xenothal prime if you wanted. You could use a white primer if you really wanted. I, in the geek list, I have a link to another geek list that has what these colors actually look like on various like swatches of plastic. So like for example, this one was called Magos Purple. This is actually more of a pink. There's another contrast color called Velopas Pink, which is actually a little bit more purple. So not always does the color sh that you can see by looking at the bottle here, look exactly like it's gonna look on the miniature. So that's a handy little geek list I have with tons and tons of pictures that show, hey, when I put this blue on gray sear, what does it look like? If I put it on wraith bone, what does it look like? If I put it on white, what does it look like? So you can get a better ballpark sense of like, you know, certain browns are gonna look a little bit different. So you trying to figure out like the exact perfect brown, uh, you know, it's gonna be easier by having that. So I'll throw up some pictures from the priming process now. I've got a space in my garage that's sort of a dedicated space. I use uh, like a comic book box and a bunch of newspaper and cardboard and stuff there. You could do it outside. Uh, I use a ventilation mask and gloves when I prime. Uh, the gloves, somebody told me you could get like hand cancer or something from the uh, primer sprays. I don't think that's actually true, but anyway, I actually, when I prime in the dead of winter, I live up here in North Idaho, and uh, sometimes it gets super cold, and the, the gloves actually keep my hands warm because your hands will get cold if you're priming a whole bunch of stuff, and it's like 10 degrees out, then uh, the, the gloves actually help with that. But I also will put up a uh, link to a video about how to actually prime in case nobody's ever actually primed. You should definitely watch that video. It's not hard or anything. Uh, you just very lightly prime it. Don't just like zap and coat and cover the model with layers and layers of primer. Just a very, very, very thin coat of primer and you're gonna be good. You can see some examples here um, that you wanna kind of, you know, 
bend the model up so you can kind of spray it from the bottom just so you cover all the different colored pieces just to, you want to cover every inch of the model you just don't want to layer on a thick coat on every inch of the model but definitely uh, watch that video that's in the geek list i'll put a link to that video at the description of this video too and here you can kind of see the finished product of what they should look like primed with the gray sear and as well again kind of a contrast between what they started out like at so far at this point and then you know what they look like primed again okay so we're through the priming process we can take the primer out of the picture the boring part is done now we're going to start to get into the painting now i paint on my kitchen table i have a couple of these mats here i will lay down some paper towel on the side of it to kind of wick off my brushes and stuff if i got excess paint on the brush then i'll sort of wick off the brush either just off to the side or you know just kind of take some extra off of the the brush into the paper towel there and of course you want like a little dish or something for water whatever it doesn't matter um, now these brushes here this is a very interesting question i've sort of changed my tune on this now these here are from amazon these are synthetic cheap brushes this was about 10 bucks for that set this is from michael's which has got a nice little ziploc case here i actually got these on sale they were like six bucks and these are they're cheap they, you don't need anything better than this. I did. I painted all of the miniatures in this game with this one brush, except for the bases here, which you can see are just black. I used just a, a bigger, thicker brush there, which I'll talk about in a minute. But I use this for everything because it's got a small enough tip. But if you get it to a point, you know, you can lick it. I'm not going to do it on camera, but you can kind of lick it to a point there. And, you know, you're good to go. Or, you know, just provide big strokes like that. You know, so it'll, it has good coverage and it's, it's not anything to worry too much about. I've seen a lot of professional painters talk about this lately. They recommend these synthetic brushes. They're not going to last years and years and years, but they're also $7 for like 12 of them. So you're going to get your money's worth. Now, the other thing to note about equipment, and this is very important. I would not uh, shy away from this. You can see I've got this little kind of 3D printed thing for these bottles because this is a very liquidy paint. You can kind of hear it in there. If you knock this over, this paint's gonna run everywhere. You're gonna get it on your table, or your figures, or whatever else is laying around. You're gonna lose a lot of the paint. Uh, the paint's about $7, $7.50, I think, for American. And that's just gonna be a giant waste of money if you spill that. So you want something like this to hold them. It doesn't have to be anything fancy like this. There's also one from Games Workshop that's a little bit bigger. It's a little bit more expensive. It's actually a good deal, I think. And you can put more of these paints in there, but I just kind of swap them in and out, you know, just move them. If I'm using it, I'll, I'll jack it in there like that and then pull it out and swap it out. Or you could just have some kind of space where you have a, like a, something like this here, where if it does spill, it's not going to get everywhere and you can kind of pick it up quickly. Um, just something to keep it from spilling everywhere. Uh, if you use a Games Workshop shade or wash, it's the same kind of relative viscosity there. And you, you got to have something like that because you will knock it over. And I think the last couple pieces of equipment here, um, there's a list of all the contrast paint. This is all contrast paint with the exception of these two big bottles here are technical paints. All of this is all the contrast paint. You will have also want to get a gray sear base paint. This is not a contrast paint per se, but it's meant to go with this contrast undercoat, this primer for fixing mistakes, which I'll show you in a second. It's also not just for fixing mistakes, it's also, you can do some techniques with it, which I'll show you. Uh, so these are all the paints. You've got your contrast medium here, which I say in the geek list, this is get two bottles of this. If you plan on doing more painting, more contrast painting, this is like the magic sauce of contrast painting. And then you're gonna want something to seal the paint after you're done. I like this technical storm shield. This is from Citadel. I've tried various different kind of sealants and varnishes and all that kind of stuff. This is my favorite now. I, I love this. Uh, so we'll talk about that more at the end. And then finally, this is not mandatory, but I think it is mandatory. This is a Citadel kind of handle. So you can take here, let's grab this guy, and you just take and stretch that out. And then you just have this. And so now you can turn this guy. If you're trying to paint under here or do this or get at this angle, you can do that no problem. And this just makes life so easy when painting. You could get like a medicine bottle and put a little tack or something on it and tack the guy there, whatever. Get this, get two of them. 
These are super nice. They're only 10 bucks. And there's other models and things like this from other companies, but just get something like that to just, that just makes life so much easier. Now, the other thing is a palette. Uh, I don't have my wet palette here. It's actually sitting in the fridge. I leave it in the refrigerator. Uh, I've got some links and videos and things about wet palettes in the geek list. For contrast, you don't need a palette really. You could just get a plastic, you know, dinner plate that you use for barbecuing. Just, just we're going to do just a tiny bit of mixing that you actually don't even need the plate for. I'll show you that when we get to it. But if you want something to just kind of mix colors, a lot of times you'll mix a color, like I might mix this orc flesh with this technical contrast medium, just to kind of thin it out, kind of lighten it up a little bit. You don't need to really like preserve your color too much with the contrast paints like you might with a wet palette or other paints where you want to have that color around for hours or days. Uh, but you probably want like at least a plastic plate, but definitely take a look at those videos on the wet palettes as you sort of progress in painting. Uh, you'll start to find out that a wet palette is an amazing tool, uh, but for this, we don't need it. So let's just walk through each of the miniatures and talk about how these are painted. So first is Dracula. Now Dracula, I started off with just doing the cape. This is straight Blood Angels red right out of the pot just painted directly onto the cape. And you can see in the final result here, you've got the shadows and all that stuff just kind of happens with contrast paint. Just paint it right on, don't do super thick, don't do super thin. Once you get it on there, start to push it around, it will find all these sort of crevices and folds in the cape like it does there, and it just finds them. This is just straight Blood Angels red out of the pot right on there. You can see a nice picture here again of the primed Dracula with just the bits of the cape painted. Just don't be afraid. Just put the brush right on there and move it around and let it find the folds. You'll start to see. So if you see like a little bit of black start to pool there on that raised edge, move that around and shove that down into these crevices there and just keep a little bit of an eye on it. And like I said, don't put it on super thick so it doesn't run everywhere. Just get the hang of it. This is a good starting kind of practice surface. If you've not painted before, if you've not painted with contrast before, this is a great surface to sort of work on. And the red is a really good contrast color and it's, it's not too finicky. So that's, that's how we're gonna start with Dracula. Now on the still shots that I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you about cleaning up a mistake. Now remember I talked about the base gray sear. If you look at the top here of Dracula, when I painted it, I had a little bit of red run over onto his arm, which is gonna be black, as this is gonna be a black sleeve. That's fine, that is one million percent gonna happen every time you paint a miniature. No big deal, what I'm gonna take, we're gonna take some gray sear base and we're just gonna wipe that away. It's like a little bit of an eraser. That's one of the cool things about contrast, if you're a beginner, is you can just paint where you want. You've matched the prime coat, the base coat, and then you basically erase that color. And because it's a base, it's gonna cover up very cleanly over kind of the more viscous, uh, transparent uh, contrast paint. So this is a good example here. I'm not gonna show you every time I made a mistake, but I wanted to show this one. Now the next thing we're gonna look at here is we're gonna use Gulliman Flesh, and we're gonna paint that on Dracula's face and his hands. And this, we're just gonna use straight out of the bottle, and it's gonna go right into his face it's going to again it's going to find all the crevices it's going to find the little nooks and crannies on his hands and that's it just paint those two areas very simply with the gully and flesh and now we're going to break out the black templar and just cover everything except for his kind of center vest piece and just cover all of it. he's going to have black boots black jacket black sleeves just cover all of that again being careful with it but also using the gray sear to go over the top of it, fixing any mistakes and then fixing whatever color was there. Now we're getting pretty close to done, but you can see his, his vest is still pretty, uh, pretty pale and pretty white. So we're gonna go and just pick up a couple of the shadows we're gonna use as apothecary white. Uh, this is actually more of a gray, but it's going to find its, itself in the recesses, keep it pretty white, but then also add just a little bit of shade. So it's a nice, easy way to kind of shade white, which kind of is counterintuitive. So we're gonna just pick out all the parts of is that central kind of vest and just cover everything there in the apothecary white. And then this last bit is possibly optional, but we're gonna cover that center little clasp and this little bow tie with the snake bite leather. Here you can see kind of the example uh, right there. So this, after it's dry, 
uh, this is what it's kind of kind of look like. And all the pictures that I've been showing, I should have mentioned earlier, are going to be kind of like while the paint's wet. So if you're following along, in, especially in the geek list, you can kind of see, oh, okay, that looks right. Uh, you know, it looks a little wet. It didn't look like you know the final product that Joel showed me, but eventually it's going to get here. It's going to get to the dry position. But this is to give you an idea of what it looks like as it's wet. And you also can see the base of this is a black. So what I use for all the bases, since this is a beginner video, I didn't want to do too much basing, but I have this big old tub of uh, folk art pure black. This is like a few bucks for this. Now you don't need a big one like that. You could get one like this size, but since I do so much painting, I got just got a big one. So you can just get one like this, folk art black or any kind of cheap black paint. Use a just kind of a bigger kind of throwaway brush and then kind of cover that the base there so then you've got your base and so i like to uh, kind of do that as i work um, so I, I actually painted this base black before i finished this just because it kind of gives you a nice sort of contrast to sort of see you know what that color sort of bounces off of the base with where because if you get like kind of a pool of different colors at the bottom of the base there it kind of can throw my eye off personally. So I like to just get a solid black base and then that way I kind of ignore the base for a while. If I'm gonna go back in and add rocks and texture and stuff like that, I can do that. But I like to just have the base black while I'm trying to finish it. So that's all the steps to Dracula. You do the cape and then you do the skin, then you do black on the hair and everywhere else except for the vest, then apothecary white, and then just a little bit of snake bite leather dirt, just to add a little bit of a contrast uh, to that there. So that is Dracula. Next, we're going to move on to the creature. And now that we're all warmed up, we're going to do something completely super easy. This is literally two different colors over the entire miniature, and that's it. So the first thing we're going to apply is orc flesh everywhere. Just apply it over the entire miniature, and then let that dry. Go work on a different miniature, and then come back with a little bit of plague bear flesh, and just kind of go over it lightly. Now you can kind of see, so it's a little bit lighter green. They're right above my thumb on top of his head, a little bit on his face there. Don't like cover the whole thing with plague bear flesh, just do it in certain pots. And it will just kind of add a little bit of variant different kind of green. So you've got some darker greens and some medium greens, a little bit of lighter greens. And that's it. He's just a giant green monster. There's not really a lot to uh, this miniature. You I mean, you could go in and do little details and stuff, but that's what this character is. So this is a super easy one. If you want, you could do this one first, just to kind of, you know, get your feet wet. But I figured let's jump in with Dracula first. You get a better idea of how to control this. This one is just layering paint on, bunch of orc flesh, wait for it to dry, go over it with plague bear flesh, you're done. Super easy. Anybody could do this miniature, I think. Now sticking with the plague bear flesh, we're gonna do Frankenstein and then the Bride of Frankenstein. And go ahead and do their faces and their hands all with plague bear flesh and just cover that up and just do it straight out of the pot. So far, everything has been straight out of the pot. I'll get into some different uh, techniques as we kind of move through, but everything so far has been pretty straightforward. So once that's dry, let's take away Frankenstein for a second and go to the Bride of Frankenstein. Now you see this dress here. Now, the nice thing about using that gray sear is we've already got kind of a nice gray because she's got kind of a dirty kind of white uh, wedding dress, I guess it's supposed to be. Uh, so what we're gonna do actually here is mix a little bit of that apothecary white that we used on Dracula's vest with some contrast medium and just apply it very lightly. It is gonna pull a little bit in those recesses. You can kind of see those a little bit highlighted there, not too distinctly, uh, but it should not pull like any in the, on the flat areas there. And just cover the whole dress with that. And then now we've completed her dress. And that's one of the nice things about that contrast medium is the contrast has a tendency to kind of pool everywhere, where if you add that medium, you can stretch and thin it across on those kind of flatter surfaces. So that, that's why I really want to emphasize using that medium. Now next, we're gonna take the skeleton hoard and just do that on her bandages here. Basically her arms will be all skeleton hoard and just cover that straight out of the pot just like so. Once that's done, then you can apply Black Templar to her hair here. And as you can kind of see, there's like these little lighting bolts in the side of her hair. We'll get to that after that dry. So don't do like just goop on the hair here, like do it gingerly, just add it there. Let the kind of contrast do its work because it'll just kind of pick out highlights and just kind of have various shades in there. And then once that's dry, go back into it with the gray sear base on top of these lightning bolts. And they're actually a little bit hard to see until you actually get that Black Templar paint on there. Uh, when the 
miniature was not even primed. I, I didn't even notice that these existed. <laughs> so, but once I had this in here, the Black Templar kind of finds the little nooks and crevices and crannies there. So you can see, oh, there's that little lightning bolt that it shows in her artwork. And so just apply this very gingerly here. This might, you know, be a little bit meticulous work there, but it's fine because if you smudge over it, you know, into the hair, just cover that with the Black Templar then, and it's gonna basically clean itself up for you. So that's a nice little uh, kind of technique that you can do with this gray sear base, is not only does it good for fixing mistakes, but you can kind of go over certain areas and then kind of change the color. Like if I wanted to paint her whole arm here, and then maybe do this kind of central bandage, a different color, I could go over with the gray sear base and then do like a little red stripe or something. And you can kind of build and sort of create your own sort of almost like a freehand, but you can kind of pick out and find your own little definitions of certain things this way. So that's her done. Next, we're gonna finish up Frankenstein and we'll go ahead and apply to his jacket and his pants a Sigor Brown. Now I use a lot of different browns in this particular project, but I think it was warranted because that way you've got a little bit of, uh, you know, various kind of shades and the browns aren't the same across all the different miniatures. But again, if you wanted to kind of just buy one brown and then use this contrast medium here to sort of, uh, you know, make it shade differently, then that's certainly a little cheat that you could do here. But this is Saigar Brown on the jacket and the pants. And then we went ahead and did Black Templar on his shoes and his hair. And once we did that, we went back into his shirt under the jacket and did the same technique that we did with the bride on her dress with a mix of contrast medium and apothecary white. Kind of keeping that same color that's already there under the primer, but then again, this will pick out a little bit of shades without being too stark, and it'll just kind of catch those folds in the right way. Now next, we'll do another easy one. We're gonna do the mummy. And for the start off, we'll do skeleton horde everywhere except his face. And so just apply that pretty liberally and cover the whole miniature except the face. And then from there, you can just apply Gulliam and Flesh to his face. But I think you could do a few different things here. You could probably do Apothecary White. You can just leave it. You could do a couple different things. You could do like a different, like a purple or something to have like a weird aura for his face. I think you could do anything you want there. Uh, but I just did a Gulliam and Flesh right out of the pot, just enough to pick out the eye sockets and all that kind of fun stuff. And then just to have a little bit more variation on his bandages, I went back in with snake bite leather and just kind of picked out kind of random different little areas, areas where I thought there might be some shadow and just to add some variation between the snake bite leather and the skeleton horde, various shades of brown, just to kind of you know make it a little bit more interesting to look at. He's just a bunch of bandages, so it's not super exciting, but I thought that looked okay there. But this is one I think you could really uh, have fun with and try different colors and do random colors and you know maybe paint certain bandages colors and do other colors you know like a kind of not a rainbow but like you know you could do very kind of interesting cool things with this. So we've got two more to go. Now we'll do the Invisible Man. First, we'll want to knock out the yellow on kind of the sash around his robe as well as kind of the trim on his robe. We're going to do a Yandon yellow and just kind of get that on here. This is a great color. Yellow's often very hard to do, uh, but this is a nice one. See, in the pot, it looks kind of orange, but after it dries, it looks pretty yellow. So, and it does a good job of actually shading yellow. So again, like the Apothecary White, which shades white, this actually shades yellow for you. Then after that, let's cover the rest of his robe with the Magos Purple, which again is actually more pink. And I chose this because I figured this bathrobe would be kind of uh, neglected and dirty and faded and frankly a little bit gross. So I went ahead and covered the whole robe with the Magos Purple. And again, let it pick out the little folds and crevices in the robe. And then I went and applied a little bit of Talisar Blue to uh, the bottom of his pants there, peeking out underneath the robe. And then Apothecary White on the his head and the chest piece. This is straight out. Uh, not no contrast medium or any thinning there because the next step is to apply black Templar on his shoes but then also on that kind of like glasses that he wears and so that's going to add a little bit of shading and stuff there we're going to do a little bit of a thing and you can kind of see how that turns out when it looks dry it almost looks like a little bit of a silver there now I also did sort of do a little bit of that gray sear base on his lenses there like kind of on the top uh, I'll talk about that more when I talk about eyes, but other than that, like very, like two little touches there at the top of his glasses, that's all contrast there. Now, finally on the last one, we're gonna do uh, the Wolfman here. And for his fur, 
we did Gore Grunta fur. And so that's on his feet and his hands and then his, the hair on top of his head as well as the beard uh, going underneath there. And so this, I particularly really like this paint because, you know, like the name says, it's fur. This does look, does a good job of, of looking like hair or fur on uh, most miniatures. And the next thing I actually worked on was his shirt. I just painted that straight Talisar blue. You can see here how it's just picking up all the little folds and pockets and everything on a shirt. Uh, you might throw a little bit of contrast medium in it when you go to the back of the shirt. We can kind of see that here uh, because there's a lot of flat areas here. You don't want it to really pool and look like coffee stains on the shirt. So just, just a little dab of contrast medium, not a ton. Um, and you know, maybe just put a little bit right on there and kind of mix the, mix the paint right in there with it so it doesn't pull up too much on the back of the shirt and, and look all splotchy or anything. So that you might do there. And then after that, we're gonna do his face. And in this case, I actually used the Gulliman Flesh mixed with a little bit of contrast medium because I wanted to have a good contrast, you can see here after it's dry, of a, a little bit lighter shade of skin there so it would just bounce a little bit and not get muddied up uh, with the brown hair. So that, that way it didn't really kind of bleed together. And then finally we did Militarum Green on his pants and just covered his pants that way. So these are all done now. I've got all the blacks painted here on the bases. And the last step, if you want, is eyes. And you can kind of see that actually here on the Wolfman, that dot in each of his eyes there. And that's just that gracier base on a fine tip point. Uh, I can show you kind of a better picture here on the still shot of the creature and have got the two dots for gray in there. And I did that on all of them except for Dracula. I didn't do a dot in his eyes because I just thought the expression and everything on his face, I didn't really want to put like a dot on there. And again, I went back over the top of the glasses on the Invisible Man. So here's a shot of them kind of after they're done painted. And then I used again the technical storm shield. I just covered everything, covered the bases, uh, all parts of the miniatures. Just, you know, put it on there. Don't let it, you know, pull up too much. Just it'll cover it so you can actually go and see her handle it and play with it and move it around without, you know, pulling paint off. You've got to do that if you're going to play actually a game with the miniatures. You got to cover it up. So once again, here's the finished miniatures. Again, please follow along on the geek list so you can see step by step. It's broken down into very discrete steps, so you should be able to knock this out. I did it in about four hours, start to finish. If you're a new painter, you know, give yourself maybe a couple more hours beyond that. The cost of the materials is gonna be about 100, 150 bucks, depending on like, you know, how many different paints you get. If you get every single paint, uh, you know, here I've seen some people do, like for example, this guy's robe in red. So you can make this guy the same red as Dracula. So you could, that's another paint you don't have to buy. I could maybe cut down on one of the browns uh, that we use. Maybe you don't do the plague bear flesh on these dishes. Do everybody with the orc flesh. I'm sure that would look fine. So there's a couple of ways you can save money. You don't have to get a wet palette. You don't have to get, you know, a bunch of brushes and all that kind of stuff. Maybe you already have some of the contrast paints. You already have a primer that you could use. But hopefully this is enough for folks to kind of follow along and walk through. And again, use the geek list, leave comments here on this video or ask questions on the geek list itself. And that is horrified. So hopefully there's enough time for folks. There's a couple of weeks before Halloween. If you want to go out and pick it up and paint it and play with your family, I think that would be cool. Okay, thanks.